Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna be downloading and setting up Git and GitHub. And so I'm gonna show you how you can do both. And then in the next lesson, we're gonna dive into Git. And then in future lessons, we'll be combining both Git and GitHub. And we should learn a ton in this series. Now, if you're already on Mac or Linux, go down and search and see if you already have Git pre-installed because Git should come pre-installed on both those operating systems. If for whatever reason you don't have it, you can install those here. But I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm gonna download Windows because if you are on Windows, you will not have Git pre-installed at all. It just does not come pre-installed. So let's download for Windows. We're gonna click here to download. Now we have to save this somewhere. I'm just gonna go to my downloads and save this in here. There we go, let's go ahead and save this. And there we go, there's our exe file. Let's go ahead and click on it. So now we get this pop-up and this is the Git setup. And it's very, very simple. So let's just walk through it. Let's go ahead and click next. We need to specify where we're going to keep this. I am gonna keep this in my program files, so I don't need to change that location. Next we need to select the components. Now there are ones already pre-installed. If you are gonna be using Git a ton, you can check for daily updates, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. We can also create a shortcut if we want to access Git. I don't want this on my start menu, so I'm not gonna do that, but if you want to, you can go ahead and have that. And let's click next. This one is very important. Choose the default editor used by Git. Now, it says use Vim's, the ubiquitous text editor, as Git's default, but I don't recommend that at all. In fact, I'm gonna switch mine to Visual Studio Code. That's gonna be as Git's default editor. I believe if we go back to Vim really quick, I think it's up here. If we go back to Vim, I think it says, uh, note, Vim is a default editor for historical reasons and is highly recommended to switch to a modern GUI editor instead. Uh, I concur. Vim is uh, great, but is also very old. Um, and it's kind of a ancient tool, if you want to call it that. But I'm going to change mine to Visual Studio Code because that's what I use when I am coding. So we are going to use that. Let's go ahead and click on next. Now we need to adjust the name of the initial branch of the new repository. Now by default, it's gonna call it master, but that does potentially cause issues actually when you connect it with GitHub. And in fact, I prefer it being called main. That's my personal preference, but we're going to keep it as master because I will show you how you can just change the branch name once you get in there. But if I were doing this for myself, which I do use it myself, then I would just call it main. But let's keep it as let git decide, and we'll click next. After this, we have to adjust our path environment. Now there are some different options, and they could be a bit limiting depending on what you wanna choose for your path. I recommend just using the git from the command line and also from third-party software. That'll help us down the line just for simplicity purposes. So I'm gonna keep it that, and click next. Next, we have to choose our secure shell client program. Which one would you like to use? And we're of course just gonna use the bundled open SSH. If you wanna use an external one and you know how to do it, then you can do that. But if not, just keep it with the default option. Next, we have to choose our HTTPS transport backend. If you have an open SSL library, you just need to kind of verify this and you'll need to make sure that that's set up properly. We're just gonna use our native Windows secure channel library that's already built in. Next, we have to configure the line ending conversions. We're gonna check out the Windows style. I'm gonna keep it for Windows because it just makes it easier and that's what I'm used to. Now we have to configure the terminal emulator to use with Git Bash. We're again keeping it as the default option here. Now this one is quite important. It says choose the default behavior of git pull. Now git pull is something that we will be looking at in this series. And when you write git pull and you run it, what do you want it to do by default? Do you want it to fast forward or merge, rebase, only ever fast forward? So there are different options that we can have. Now by default, it's fast forward and merge. So it says fast forward the current branch to the fetch branch when possible, otherwise create a merge commit. You can also choose rebase, which, which it will rebase the current branch onto the fetch branch. If there are no local commits to rebase, this is equivalent of a fast forward or just use a fast forward. Now you guys, if you've never used Git, have no idea what this means, but I'll talk about some of this once we get to it, but we're gonna keep it as fast forward or merge. Next, if you want, you can use a credential helper and I do recommend that. So we're gonna keep it. You don't have to, you can just choose none. Let's go ahead and click next. It's asking us if we want to enable file system caching or enable symbolic links. You can do both or none. I'm just gonna keep the first one as default. And now we can install Git on our local machine. 
It should be very, very quick. Git is a very light program. And so this should be done in just a minute. All right, so it is all done. It says completing the Git setup wizard. We can launch Git Bash or view the release notes. I don't need to view the release notes, but I do want to launch Git Bash. Let's go ahead and click finish. And there we go. It's going to go ahead and open up Git for us. So this is Git Bash. And now we do have this installed. Now in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to get in here. We're going to initialize a repo. We're going to have some files and see how we can save it and create those snapshots like we talked about in the last lesson. But right now we have it installed. This should be good to go. Now let's come up here to GitHub. And what we're going to do is we are going to sign up for a free account. All we have to do is provide an email password, a username, and where you live, and we can create our free account. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I have that filled out, I called my username Alex the Analyst Git Series because I already have a bunch of other GitHub accounts, and so I can't just call it Alex the Analyst. But let's go ahead and create our account. And now we need to go to our email and type in the code that they gave us. Let me go get that code. All right, I went ahead and put it in there. And now we have created our account and now we just need to sign in. So if it's a Google account, you can sign in with Google. If it was just an email or username, you can do that and put in your password. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with my username and password. Let's go ahead and click sign in. And now we have a GitHub account. Congratulations. Let's come right over here and let's go to our profile. So in our profile, we can see how many commits we've made, which is basically none. I guess we have one. It's saying we have a commit, but I didn't make any commits. And then we have no repositories. So we are going to, in the next several lessons, we're gonna learn a lot about Git. We're gonna learn how to connect Git to GitHub and learn how to collaborate between the two, very much like you would in a real job. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're able to get Git and GitHub both set up so that we can continue our projects in the future. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.